Welcome to Anything Scout Tech Tips. I'm Sean and today we are going to install an Anything Scout exclusive premium suspension kit. We've partnered with Deaver Spring to develop the ultimate two and a half to two and three quarter inch lift kit. And today we're gonna to show you an install. The Anything Scout Deaver Premium Suspension Kit is simply that. It's a premium option uh, for your International Scout 2. Historically, as we all know, there are Rough Country and Skyjacker kits, and those kits are great, and we've worked with them for a lot of years. But what we were looking for is that 25% ride quality improvement that we just couldn't get from those companies and something that was made in the USA. We want to support US manufacturing and Deaver was the right partner for us. Philosophically and technically, the reason we can get that ride quality improvement is because they're using more thin leaves. So the other brands have thicker leaf springs and fewer of them, which means the springs are a, kind of a harsher spring rate these thin multiple leaf packs give you a more progressive, really a softer, more tame ride, both on-road and off-road. And we've done a lot of testing um, in different environments from street to desert to rock crawling, and these springs just perform wonderfully. So this is the kit. It's a comprehensive kit. Comes with recessed U-bolt plates in the rear, HD U-bolt plates in the front, shackles, U-bolts, bushings, everything minus the shocks. We have a couple different options for shocks and this kit is available on anythingscout.com. Check it out, let us know if you have any questions. Okay, I would call this a three wrench job, meaning three wrenches of difficulty, not three physical wrenches, but this is a fairly involved job for the newbie. Um, if you've done it a couple times, it requires some heavy lifting, you know, things like this. So let me walk you through the tools that you're gonna need. You're gonna need, definitely want an impact driver, some kind of air impact driver, or like if you have a DeWalt or Milwaukee, like a good quality half inch drive, electric impact driver might work, but sometimes U-bolts get pretty salty and they're hard to get off. Uh, dead blow hammer, lady's foot, some wrenches. This is another tool that is pretty specific, but is very helpful. It is a ball joint press, and so we're gonna use this to press out the spring bushings. Well, the frame leaf spring bushings. Uh, very helpful tool. Small impact driver, jack stands, a floor jack. We have a lift here in this shop, but you guys likely don't have a lift in your garage. So we're gonna use jack stands and do it old school. So that's the tools. There may be some other things, but just have a good selection of tools. We estimate this job with one, one person. We typically bid about five hours for a complete suspension install because there's always little hiccups and problems and we might encounter some of those today. Um, when you're installing a suspension kit, you can reuse your stock U-bolt plates. You're always gonna wanna have new U-bolts but your U-bolt plates, just inspect them for the shock. You, typically like the shock holes have some sort of damage. So on this kit, since it's a premium comprehensive kit, we are going to use these U-bolt plates, the HD Anything Scout U-bolt plates for the front. And our Deaver Premium Kit comes with this recess U-bolt plate in the rear. So if you're installing a Rough Country or Skyjacker, you will not need this for the rear either reuse your stock one or use these. Um, spring bushings, be careful and be aware that your leaf springs will obviously come with new bushings, but a lot of times we see people that do not replace these in their frame. So we'll point that out when we get there, but your frame has spring bushings, the leaf springs have spring bushings. Another note, is it is a very good idea to use all new hardware. And again, our hardware kits are for sale on anythingscout.com, so you can source all of that hardware, but don't use old, cruddy, rusty, half-stripped hardware when you're putting on a new suspension kit. Same goes for the shocks. Use new hardware for your shocks. Let's get after it. Part number one of this tech tip, get a buddy. This is David, he's done this a few times. 
So having a friend to help is a very smart idea. Tackling this solo uh, can be challenging because the lift, the springs are heavy and it's just nice to have two people. Um, funny story, just work, the first step, step one, is use jack stands. Properly jack up the truck, place jack stands under the frame and then under the axle. Funny story, really quick. Brad Sims, if you're watching this, forgive me. But back in San Jose, old days, I had some young kids working for me. And I'm like, hey, go put jack stands on the truck. Uh, we're gonna do a suspension kit. And then take off the front, I rattled off some instructions. And I just hear this loud, like I hear with the impact, and then this loud crash, and the truck falls off the jack stands. Because what he did was he put jack stands on the axle, not under the frame. And on a spring under setup, when you release the U-bolts, so the axle just jacked up to the floor, truck falls down, it was a mess. So jack stand placement is key, we'll walk you through that. Okay, step one, we're gonna jack the axle from the axle, uh, center, of the, pretty much center of the diff is fine. There are people that say you shouldn't jack up from the diff or the center, but I've done it thousands of times, it's totally fine. We have a nice a jack that actually lifts pretty tall, but if you don't, if your jack doesn't go very tall, then you'll want to use like a two by four and stack a couple pieces of two by four and just go as high as you can. And one thing I'll point out is that this truck is pretty typical in the sense that it's been rigged, like it has really rigged up shackles, shot bushings, like this truck was just used and abused. And so it'd be good. It's probably about as high as we want to go. Okay. So what we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna place the frame uh, jack stands first. So let's move back here. Placement is key. There's a little saddle right underneath here. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the other side now. Okay, that's good. On the driver's side, just be careful um, of the e-brake cable. Try not to pinch the e-brake cable. Then we'll just slowly let it down, not all the way, just until we get engagement. Keep an eye on the jack stands. Notice we're using uh, larger jack stands, not those little tiny ones. These are not the greatest for a scout, these little boys. These bigger ones are better. Okay, that's, that's good. I like to place these outside in between the axle C. All right, let it down. Another quick tip, number two, if you're doing jack stands out in the dirt, like if you're doing this out in a gravel driveway, cut little pieces of two by eight or some plywood. Don't, don't, cause jack stands will sink into the ground. Even I've seen them sink into the ground pretty hard on just hot asphalt. So be careful of that cause safety is important. We're gonna give it the shake test. And we're doing the front, front leaf springs and bushings first, and then we'll move on to the rear. So we're gonna take tires off, and yeah, then we'll start unbolting the leaf springs. One thing I like to do, and an encouragement to you, wherever level mechanic you are, I like to keep a tidy workspace, and by the time you just start like throwing lug nuts on the ground and throwing U-bolts on the ground, like it starts to get chaotic. So one technique, and it takes a little bit longer, but it's it's better overall because you just can be more organized. It's like put the lug nuts back on, then you're not going to get lost. Um, and as you can see, the layout here, um, shock absorber, leaf springs, that's all stuff that we're going to be re, uh, replacing. We're also going to add one more. Remember, I was making fun of that little jack stand. Thank you. We're going to place this jack stand underneath the pinion so that when the pinion, when we take the leaf springs off, nothing is holding the axle from rotating. So that's gonna keep the axle steady. Okay, so we're gonna take off the leaf springs and the shocks. We're gonna start with the shocks, then take all the U-bolts off of the axle and the leaf spring. The U-bolts connect the axle to the leaf spring. I removed the bump stop. That's another part of this job. Um, we're gonna do brake hoses, your soft lines, and bump stops. Very important. 
Uh, number two, generally just inspect things, like inspect your spring hangers, look for cracks in the frame. Now's your time to kind of take care of that stuff. And uh, we got the U-bolts unbolted. So as you can see, this truck was hammered pretty hard off-road. When I bought this truck, front hubs were blown, rear differential was broken, transfer case was broken. Number, it was just really abused off-road. So this is uh, probably part, you know, kind of par for the course. Check that out, man. Banged up. So we're gonna replace these anyway. One more thing, uh, on a Scout 2, if you notice, this is a three-piece on the passenger side. This is a three-piece U-bolt plate. This is correct. A lot of times people try to put other weird stuff on there. Our HD shackle plates that we're gonna use fit and, and are the same left to right, but just kinda use your hammer, smack the U-bolts out. One other thing on the passenger side only, the great mystery of the Scout. There is a spacer plate. See that spacer plate? Yeah, it's supposed to go in there. We'll put it back in on the passenger side only. It is to help the vehicle sit level. And actually what it does is it's a lowering block. So if your truck is leaning to the driver's side, like it's got a gangster lean to the driver's side, it's typically because someone Put in a lift and left out these spacer plates. Okay, I think we got all the U-bolts off. Dave's gonna take that shock off next. And then we'll uh, take out the leaf spring and shackle bolts, drop that stuff down. Your shackle bolts should and mostly do come in two sides. Well, the bolt side of the head is a 5 8 The nut side is 11 16 so. And as I was speculating, these are super tight, so I'll probably get the impact. These are great for like 70% of all the work you can do on a Scout. Very light, very easy to use, but air tools just have more juice, man. So, easy. That means I'm getting weak. And if you typically just, uh, reverse the impact it, while getting the bolt out, you can get it out enough to sneak a wrench in there. And then you just take this wrench, put it up against the head, and then I'm gonna leave, I actually might just let it fall. Uneventful. <laughs> As you can see while we're here, these shackles are super rigged, man. Someone had fun with some scrap metal and a welder, a stick welder. <laughs> Another quick thing to note, and I see this wrong a lot. If you notice, this main leaf has a curve in it where this comes into the center of the eye. And on this side, it wraps in on the bottom. So this is the front or the shackle side. This is the fixed side. Skyjacker utilizes this curve. So install your Skyjackers correctly. Rough Country and Deaver, they do not have this curve. So there, there are side specific, like there's a front and a rear because the center pin is um, offset a little bit on our kit, but on a stock, the center pin is centered in the leaf spring. This is the leaf spring. This is called the center pin. These are just spring wrap packs or spring wraps. Earlier I mentioned inspecting your U-bolt plates because the temptation is I'll just reuse this U-bolt plate since it doesn't come with my kit. But if you look closely, you can see this hole. The shock hole is slightly oblonged. That's a problem number one. Problem number two, is this actually has been welded together two times. So this at one point was like shattered. 
and they welded it all back together. So this is not a reusable part in its current condition. So you'll want to source new ones. This is the stuff that gives scouts a bad name for a lot of years. Like, look how rigged that is. Someone took and welded a shackle, cut this off to give it a little bit of lift. And I know you're, they're trying to save money, but it's not that hard to make a proper shackle or to just buy one. Um, they're not that expensive. So if you have stuff like this on your truck when you're doing it, let's get rid of it, put the proper parts on it. The Deaver kit comes with new shackles. Uh, Skyjack or Rough Country will not come with new shackles, but they're readily available on, on our site or on other people's sites. So, and we try to keep these tech tip videos uh, quick, but it's not like you're gonna be doing an emergency suspension kit install, so you probably have some time to watch this. But a lot of people don't know what this bar is, this bar that connects the two front shackles. And essentially, it's a factory version of a sway bar. So when this, you know, if this, spring gets compressed and it pushes forward it pushes forward on this shackle which tends to try to want to compress the, the opposite side so it keeps the vehicle more level in corners if your truck is mostly a off-road truck i wouldn't run this if it's 70 30 mostly an on-road truck then you definitely want to rerun that factory sway bar okay remember when i showed you this little spacer spring uh, this spacer spring is supposed to have a half of a center pin in it. So when I saw that that was missing, if you look up underneath in the differential housing, there's a broken, a sheared off portion of a center pin. So that's going to have to come out. So unfortunately, i got to figure out a way to get that out of there. Good. Okay, now it's time to press in the bushings the polyurethane spring bushings into the Deaver Springs. Um, you want to wear gloves because you want to grease uh, grease the bushings as they're going in. Just be generous with the grease coating. I know that uh, when you order our premium spring bushings, they come with a bushing lubricant, but we find a high temp barren grease works fine. If you don't grease these they just tend to like deteriorate quicker and um, yeah it's pretty simple man they just press right in but you do want to put bushings in first then the sleeve in last it is very critical to make sure you put this sleeve in clean up any excess grease because uh, you don't need to fling that stuff around. And make sure the bushing is seated all the way into the leaf spring. So I'm just going to do all four and then remember one of the uh, most difficult kind of bummer jobs is getting replacing the bushings in the frame. So we'll do that next. I'll do these and then we'll do that. So David just prepped out our spring spacer which there's another one of these in the rear of the truck. Same side. Um, so we cleaned it out so that it sits like this on this center pin. So it'll basically go like that on the truck. Um, so we'll just set it aside for now and install it when we need it. Okay, now it's time to take the, the bushings out of the frame. These are original rubber bushings and there's a metal sleeve, a rubber bushing, and then a metal sleeve. And dude, in the old days, I've had problems forever trying to get these out where you burn them out I've seen that I've done that technique multiple times or you hammer them out drill them out well, that's another technique you drill them and then take a sawzall blade or something and cut the metal sleeve but they were just a pain so we came up with this if you use a ball joint press and a 13 16 socket we actually took it and welded a little center stud in there, a 7 16 center stud. But essentially this piece sits in there and we'll show you how to use a ball joint press. And you could rent these ball joint presses at your local auto parts store for 
free or like 10 bucks a day or something. It is a worthwhile thing to borrow or to rent. You want to help? Okay, so pay attention again to the orientation of the spring. You'll notice this has two uh, wrap clamps on the back, one on the front. Um, we've measured this spring. They're about an eighth inch offset, but measure your Skyjack or Rough Country. Typically the fronts are centered, the rears are definitely offset, but we're gonna put the sticker toward the front. So if you're installing a Deaver kit, sticker goes to the front. So for this part, this is where that lady's foot's gonna come in handy to help center the sleeve into your hole. Again, inspect the quality and roundness of your hanger and the hanger for any cracking. This has already been cracked and re-welded, so the welds look okay. Good enough, we'll just get them all started and then we'll go on to the front. Sometimes this is kind of difficult. It's going pretty easy on this. Having David help me is really good. I'm gonna do something a little different here. I'm gonna get the floor jack. Just hope it'll fit in there. So David, you just, just kind of hold that actually down. So that's really the hardest part of hanging the leaf springs. And as you can see, our jack stand situation worked out great. We're, we'll go hang that right, you wanna put that right spring up. We got our front shackle, sway bar set up. Just everything is hand tight. Don't start tightening anything until everything is configured together. So we'll put our sway bar in, David. And then We'll drop the axle down onto the leaf springs, remembering our spacer. And then we'll go transition onto bump stops and brake soft lines, U-bolts, U-bolt plates, and shocks. So now we're ready to drop the axle. Now we're gonna basically we can get rid of these jack stands. So what we're gonna do is make sure we have our spacer on the passenger side. So it'll set nicely right there. Now you wanna make sure you line up this, the holes in the perches and in the housing uh, to this. So David, you got that jacked up a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna take this jack stand off, take our pinion. I might actually leave the pinion one for now. All right, Dave, slowly go down with that. Okay. That's really just hanging on the... Okay, that's what you want. You want to hear that... Uh, Feel that kind of drop down and hear it, the center pins click in. All right, now it's time to put U-bolts and U-bolt plates on. Our Deaver kit comes with really premium grade hardware, these hardened high nuts or tall nuts, whatever they're called, and grade eight thick washers. Um, the Rough Country and Skyjacker kits come with these nylock nuts and thin little washers that are not the greatest. I don't actually recommend it. We sell these as kits, even as add-ons for the Rough Country and Skyjacker. So use good hardware, especially when you're using a premium HD U-bolt plate. 
We have all of our new hardware. Shock goes to the outside and back. And we'll trim our U-bolts to length once everything is finished because we don't want long U-bolts. That's a big no-no. It's a faux pas, if you will. When you leave, people leave the U-bolt studs hanging way down. Got to trim those up, man. Okay, at this phase, we're ready to start tightening everything up. So we'll kind of go through um, you can find all the torque specs on our website. We're going to tighten everything up and then we'll do bump stops and brake soft lines. Uh, and then everything will be wrapped up on the front and we'll slap the tires back on it. And uh, I'm excited to see what it looks like. Okay, two things we talked about but didn't show you is bump stops and braided stainless brake hoses. The braided stainless stainless brake hoses come with the kit. The bump stops don't come with the kit because it is determined by tire size. So I am not 100% sure on this rig if I'm gonna keep 31s or go to 33s. These bump stops will work for 31s, not necessarily for 33s. So we'll figure that out and kind of keep you up to date. But we're gonna go ahead and just tighten everything down. U-bolts um, get tight like they're 100 foot pounds and you're going to want to re-torque those around 500 miles so get it down tighten those up the shackle bolts don't kill those those are what i would consider snug plus probably 25 30 foot pounds of torque um, if you over tighten those it'll inhibit the ride it'll hurt the ride quality um, so we're going to go through bust this out and uh, wrap up the front end Okay, we got everything tight to where it roughly needs to be. We have not torqued it, so we'll go back through with the torque wrench. Um, but we're gonna switch the jack stands from the frame to the axle. So I'm just putting the uh, sleeve into the shock. Make sure you get the correct one. Like typically Rancho, Rough Country, Bilstein, they come with a few different sleeves and make sure the ID is one half inch. So David is over there doing braided stainless brake hoses. The only real thing is make sure that they're indexed correctly so that the brake hose is not going to rub on the tire, whether it's while it's turning or just in stationary uh, position. I've noticed that a bunch of times brake hoses fail because they're rubbing against the tire. So make sure they're not rubbing. Number one, number two, always use brand new crush washers. You can reuse the banjo bolts, but use new crush washers every time. Okay, so the front is basically done. We got leaf springs done, shackles done, sway bar done, shocks done, bump stops, brake hoses. Everything's pretty much, we still have to do a final torque on the U-bolts, but we're gonna put front tires on and then we'll transition to the back of the truck and then we'll wrap up the whole job. We are installing these wheels with an impact driver. You definitely need to torque your lug nuts we are just putting these wheels on temporarily to move it around the shop. So we'll do all that torque checking before we're done. Yeah. Front is finished and now it's time for the rear. So we're gonna start basic order of operations, uh, set our jack stands just like we did on the front. We'll show you the placement it's not like there's not only one placement for the jack stand, but best placement for jack stands, get the wheels off, get these Deaver two and a half inch springs on the truck. Super excited to see what it looks like. OK, 
Okay, so the jack, we're just gonna, on the rear differential, it's super easy, just center it on the pumpkin or the differential and uh, jack her up. And you wanna get it, uh, I think, kind of as high as possible, as high as the jack stands will allow you to do it. And again, just a quick note, I know we stated this already in this short video, but make sure your jack stands are stable and on a firm surface. If you're out on gravel or dirt, remember, put some wood under it. So we're gonna place the jack stand on the flat part of the frame before it curves. Don't put it on the curve. I know a lot of you guys know that. So right about where the spring, actually don't, don't block the spring because you need to get a wrench up in that pocket. So we have the front jack stands are set and secure and clear from the leaf spring. Again, the most important thing is just put it back from that little pocket for the wrench. And now David's gonna drop the axle down just a little bit and we'll set our auto jack stands. And again, I kinda like these just outside the leaf spring, in between the leaf spring and the backing plate. I'm gonna step back just in case. This small jack stand will be for the uh, for the pinion, so that doesn't rotate on it. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna buzz. Probably take the U bolts off next, U bolts and shocks, and then we'll take our shackle bolts out. It's pretty easy. And then we'll talk through orientation of the new springs and any differences between Skyjacker and Rough Country and Deaver. Okay, this is a good point. Uh, and something to be prepared for. Because if you're with your buddies, you got two or three buddies all set up to get your, your suspension kit installed, but you discover that you have a U-bolt plate that not only has an oblong hole, but has also been welded together multiple times. This thing's been Frankensteined. I'm surprised it still lasted. Um, but then you're, you're shut down because you don't want to install your new kit with this. So pay attention before you schedule your work day uh, to things like this. And you can either buy these good used ones, these are fine, or like we sell brand new heavy duty ones. Uh, the Deaver kit will come with new U-bolt plates, so not a concern, but something to think about. Okay, so one of the most, damage prone areas on your rear suspension is remember we talked about the oblong holes in your shock mounts. The U-bolt plate is actually a pretty easy thing to fix, but on the upper shock mount right here, if you look, this one is actually cracked right now and it's not the greatest shape. So David and I need to make a decision on what we're gonna do uh, typically you can weld a washer on there, like get a thick washer and actually weld the washer on there to repair the hole. So I think since this truck is going to be getting some heavy use down in Baja, I'm going to want to fix that. So we'll fire up the welder and we'll weld a thick washer onto that space. Okay, so this process is, I know it's daunting because you may not have a welder and honestly, if you didn't have a welder, what you need to do at this point is go ahead and put your suspension on, just don't put the shocks on. Because what you'll do is if you put the shocks on when the holes are all jacked, then you're just gonna keep driving it and go like, oh, I'll get to it. And then six months later, your shocks, they break and then it's more hassle. So this is just a simple uh, 110 volt welder. And I'm gonna use a nice thick grade 8 washer don't use like a cheap grade 5 thin washer um, so I'll first grind and clean grind and clean the surface 
with this handy dandy 20 volt grinder these are great to have clean it ground it weld it then we're set to go and uh, we're gonna do both sides Okay, like I said earlier about the new hardware, these are supposed to be 7 16 bolts, which would be a 5 8 head, 11 16 nut. Uh, but this actually has 3 8 hardware on it and like just all kinds of crazy stuff. And you see these like super farm fab, half inch thick shackles, custom. So we'll get rid of all that stuff and make it right. Okay, we did all the hard work fixing those shock mounts was kind of annoying but important getting those bushings out kind of annoying but important now putting it all back together is real easy i did want to show you one thing about three different suspension kits so it's uh so today we're working on the anything scout deaver collaboration kit which is the most premium kit on the market we're super stoked about it so if you notice scout twos the, where the wheel sits in the wheel well is kind of important. And I, I believe Skyjacker springs are centered front to rear. So if you notice, like the wheel will be f f like skewed to the front of the wheel well. Rough Country, I think has a half inch offset on the rear spring. Deaver does like 5 eighths to 11 sixteenths of offset to move that wheel back into the wheel well which you don't want to move it too much this is a little bit technical but like we sell perches like our hd dana 44 spring perches have three three alignment holes in them and then and that allows you to move with the right u-bolt plate you can move the axle forward and back but the problem is if you move the axle too far back when you cycle your suspension the wheel moves up and back and it'll hit on the wheel well so you want it so that's kind of important so we recommend running this deaver kit short side to the rear or the sticker don't trust it always measure but it's going to be the sticker to the shackle and that's going to move the rear axle back five eighths of an inch um, should you should always check your drive shaft lengths which we're going to check when we get this install done but always measure um, just pay attention to what you're doing don't just and if you're working with a shop make sure that you communicate that to the shop because they're not going to know they're just going to grab the springs and slap them on and if you have any questions feel free to, to shoot us an email or hit us up on instagram all right let's keep going okay i know there's going to be comments on this section of the video why are you using a vice grip? Why don't you just use a line wrench? I know what a line wrench is. This is not my first rodeo. Line wrenches, if you just put it on there, 50% of the time they'll work when it's original and old like this. What I've found is if you squeeze it nice and tight with a vice grip while the, the tube nut is still in good shape, and then you kind of in one motion just like shock it, then it'll come off with a line wrench. So now that's broken loose. And that is your golden moment of the day. Golden tip. Okay, this is not a video about brake, uh, the braided stainless brake uh, hoses install. We will do a separate video on that. But I just felt the need to say while you're doing it, this is the bolt that holds the block, the brake block down, but it also is a breather. And so I just blew on it. <laughs> And I saw that it was clogged. And if this is clogged, you'll find that you'll get like rear outer axle seal leaks and things like that. So make sure while you're at it to clean this out. Okay, brake line is halfway installed. Springs are now firmly installed. All the spring and shackle bushings are uh, tight. Now we are going to lift up the rear diff just a hair and remove now we're ready to set the leaf springs to the leaf springs. Set the axle down. 
is what I'm trying to say. Click down on. So this Deaver kit has a little bit of a beefier center pin. So we actually had to drill out the perch just a little bit. And now we're clearancing the actual U-boat plate to fit over the nut that's on the center pin. So it's a design thing that we'll actually modify our design a little bit. But it's a pretty easy fix. Okay, when you're tightening your U-bolts, make sure just go slow. Do everything kind of hand tight. You can use one of these, but just don't like ram it down. Make sure that your U-bolts are parallel. The Deaver kit, remember, uses these special heavy duty recess U-bolt plates. So those are a little different. But as you can see, it's nice and smooth on the bottom. And we'll uh, go through and trim these U-bolts down before we're done. For those of you that are keenly observant, you'll notice we did not put that uh, spacer block back in on the right rear. The reason is because when I was looking at, after we did the front, I was kind of checking out the rig and I noticed that it was slightly lower on the passenger side and those spacers are designed to fix a driver side sag. So. I just wanted to try it without it. We also, on these kits, don't recommend running any shims. No degree shims, just run, run them straight up. Just those little points, and sometimes you gotta mix and match and kind of figure things out, but general rule, start no shims, no, sp well, if I was doing a rough country kit, I would put the spacer in the rear, but we're still learning these Deaver kits, and so far, so we have a spacer on the front, not on the rear, and we'll see how it sits. Okay, so thanks for joining us for the suspension install. We did the Deaver kit. As you can see, the Deaver kit's a little bit boosted in the rear. Um, and that is a, from a couple, for a couple reasons. Number one, the kit is designed for more of an off-road kind of overland setup, assuming that you're gonna have doors, hard top, gear in the back, bumper on the back. So we're gonna actually um, tweak the kit per our situation. We're gonna be putting a rooftop tent on this, a spare tire. This has no gas in it. So we're gonna get all those things in and it's gonna break in a little bit. Um, but overall, yeah, not bad install. Probably took us four hours, four or five hours. Solved some problems, made some things better. Encourage you, this is something you could definitely do with a couple of buddies in the garage. Get out, tackle it if you have any other questions. Check us out. Remember, subscribe, like the video. Thanks again for joining us on Anything Scout Tech Tips. Thanks, David.